Hey y'all! I'm sorry for being kind of inconsistent the last couple of weeks. I had a brand deal that took a while to get approved and it kind of messed up my whole schedule. I'm, I've had a lot of people like reach out and ask if I'm okay. I promise I'm fine. I'm actually doing really well. Um, I'm going to talk about some stuff at the end of this video like I always do. I'm just going to ramble a little bit. But I'm doing great. I, there's nothing wrong. I just had a brand deal that kind of like throw off my schedule. But I'm back and I have more of your let's not meet stories that I'm really nervous to read today. The first story that I have is like, what the fuck? So I'm really excited to get into it. So we're just gonna hop right in. It says, to my sister's super toxic and abusive ex, I really hope we never see each other again, even though I know it could happen. So I'm definitely going to apologize now. The story is going to be very long, having taken place over at least three or more years. Also, this story for the most part is mostly secondhand for my sister. So some things may be wrong. For the sake of the security and privacy of the people in the story, I will be using fake names and won't name any locations. Trigger warning, the story contains mention of mental and physical abuse, suicide, and the R word. Nothing happens, I already read that part, nothing happens, it's just a mention of it, so if you're okay with just the mention of R word, nothing happens, I promise. Unless I missed a part of the story, but I'm pretty sure I skimmed over that part to make sure that this was like okay to read. If there's anything else in here, I'll put a different warning, um, and I don't go into detail ever about that kind of stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's just a mention of it. My sister, let's refer to her as Kay, has never had any luck when it comes to dating. She dated a close friend in high school and broke it off with no hard feelings, dated another guy in college for two months before breaking up with her two days before Christmas. Kay never liked showing her feelings and this will definitely come in handy later on in the story. During the spring semester of her first year of college, she finally met someone that she really liked. And honestly, everyone in my family, myself included, really liked him. I've always been able to tell the vibes of a person just by being near them for a certain amount of time, and he seemed like a really nice person. Let's call this guy John. He was your typical country guy, liked hunting and fishing, chewed tobacco, the works. But as far as we knew, he was a really nice person. He and Kay would go fishing all the time together before they started dating, and it was during one of the many fishing trips that he asked her out. Kay was very skeptical, having had just been through the Christmas breakup, but she said yes, and they started dating. For so long, everything was going smooth, but some of the things he would tell her definitely gave me off vibes. He would tell her things like how he had a daughter once with a girl from out of state and she died young, so he would go see her grave every now and again. Or how he said that he was doing secret jobs that he couldn't tell her about and he wouldn't be around on the weekends. Neither me nor Kay thought twice about these things, blindsided on how nice of a guy he was. Kay had also mentioned to him that she wanted to go into the military, go to college, and become a large animal vet. But John convinced her not to, saying, I'm planning on going into the military so you won't have to worry about enlisting. I'll provide for both of us. But the thing is, things began to not go well between the two, but Kay never let on to anything. She had been put on academic probation for a year due to failing grades, and at the time, my family thought it was due to the fact that she was paying more attention to dating than her studies. She had also been rethinking a lot of her life, like whether or not she really wanted to be a vet. And with John enlisting into the military and telling her that she wouldn't need to get a job, she put everything on a back burner and continued with her life working a minimum wage job and being a faithful girlfriend. But I knew she wasn't happy. She just never said a thing. They even got engaged and planned on getting married after he completed his mandatory enlistment, which at the time I was super happy for both of them, but something was definitely off. In March of 2019, John was graduating from boot camp, and as a surprise, Kay and I decided to travel to where he was stationed and watch his graduation. We had a fun time while we were there, we hung out with some relatives in the area, went shopping, and got introduced to a lot of the food that was down there. Graduation wasn't too bad, aside from the ton of rain that happened during it, but Kay didn't care. She had been away from John for half a year or so, and she was excited to see him. We ended up meeting up with him after the graduation, congratulating him on his graduation. The three of us decided to go somewhere to get food and catch up, but it wasn't until we got food that he told her he wouldn't be able to spend much time with her because his parents, his brothers, and him were taking a trip to another state later that day for a full week. During the two hours they were together, I could definitely feel the slight tension between the two of them, and I got to get a glimpse of one of their arguments. It wasn't until that moment after we parted ways with him that I started to get a bad feeling about John, and based on the following events, my gut feeling was right. John decided to tell Kay a day after we arrived home that they needed to take a break in their relationship. He began saying things like, What happened to you wanting to enlist in the military and getting your life together? I've got my life figured out. Why haven't you? And I thought you were going to start losing weight. Clearly you haven't. These things went on for a full week and Kay completely shut herself down to the point that his best friend, I'll call him Ethan, began to invite her places to cheer her up. He also kept her up to date on some of the sketchy things he was doing while they were on break because Ethan thought it wasn't right. John had been going on dates with another girl during the break, texting Ethan about how hot she was and how she was so much better than Kay was, basically belittling her. It wasn't until she heard this that she contacted John for the last time. 
They argued for a long time before he broke up with her and that was her breaking point. She stopped talking to family and really stopped doing a lot of things. It wasn't until a couple months later after getting a black dwarf rabbit that she finally opened up to me and what had gone on. She told me they had gotten into many arguments during their relationship and how she found out when he was visiting his dead daughter's grave slash doing secret jobs and when they were on break he had been cheating on her. He mentally degraded her so much before the breakup that for a month after, the only thought she had was ending her own life. She told me that she had gotten her pet rabbit as an emotional support rabbit to help stop the thoughts and that her rabbit was the best thing that has ever happened to her. Now you'd think the story would simply stop there, but unfortunately, it doesn't. For two years, Kay had done everything she could to get her life back together. She was working really hard at her job and even began going back to college after her academic probation had ended and began getting good grades. She had even began dating another guy, he also turned out to be a trash person, but that's not really important to the story. And everything began to go good for her for once. That is, until one day while at the college, she spotted John for the first time in two years, and clearly he had spotted her before she did. He tried sparking small conversations with her, tried playing it off like nothing had ever happened. Because I was with her half the time, because I attended the same college, I got to experience a lot of this. Very slowly, John began working his way back into Kay's life, and neither of us liked this. It wasn't until after Kay had started dating the new guy, I'll call him Jim, that she found out the two of them had been friends, as John would supply Jim with alcohol as he was around my age. We were both under 21 at the time. Kay opened up to him and told Jim her history with John, and he understood and tried his best to keep the two of them away from each other. One day, Jim had invited Kay to one of his parties that he was having with a bunch of his friends, and unfortunately, John was also there, and he was very intoxicated. He would get close to Kay, try talking to her, and kept either looking at her boobs or would get very touchy with her. No matter how many times she would try and get away from him, he would just get closer to her until someone got between them and she managed to get away from him. She told Jim how uncomfortable he was making her feel and he understood. Stuff like this went on for a while and even me and my boyfriend were getting really irritated in how much John was trying to get back into her life. But he wasn't just trying to get her through Jim, but also through me. I had come back from one of my classes and decided to meet up with Kay, Jim, and my boyfriend in the college cafeteria, but I knew something was off with Jim and Kay. Jim had told me once I got there that John tried telling them something about me, and I didn't like what he told me. He told me that John had said that once he was spending the night at our house, he had gotten drunk without Kay knowing and came up to my room and R-worded me. I was so pissed, not only because he claimed that he had done that to me, but because of the fact that I knew he was lying about it to my sister's boyfriend. Kay also knew it was a lie because she knows that if it did happen, I would have screamed at the top of my lungs and flung my body around until he got off of me or I would have told her about it and not kept it from her for two years. That was only the beginning of the torment. He continued to try and spread rumors about my sister and I, even going as far as attempting to stalk her in and outside of the campus. He clearly didn't like the fact that she wanted nothing to do with him and had moved on, and his tormenting only got worse. He began targeting her current boyfriend and harassing him. While Kay and Jim were together with another one of Jim's friends getting food, they all noticed how John and his friends were staring at the three of them and they were all really sketched out. A couple times, John would get up and either sit closer to listen into their conversations or would walk past them. Kay didn't want to go alone with him doing this, so when they decided to get food, Jim and Kay went to get food together and the friend stayed behind. The friend, okay, this is crazy, I've tried to read this a couple times, but I keep messing it up. The friend managed to overhear him saying to his friend that John was going to wait until Jim was away from Kay after she left and was going to jump him. He didn't care how much he hurt him before getting up from his seat when Kay and Jim came back from getting food. As John passed Kay, he proceeded to say to her, and to let you know, I never said I already your sister and went back to his friends. Kay and Jim had been told what had happened when they were gone, but they decided that they didn't feel safe leaving the building, so the friend called Security Campus. Security Campus? Campus Security! I keep doing that! I keep, like, mixing up two words. It's so annoying. Campus Security. Once John got wind of this, he and his friends booked it out of the building before security showed up. They ended up taking Kay, Jim, and the friend to the security office and asked them for a statement. But when they told him everything and told the man John's name, the officer knew exactly who he was. The security officer told the three that they had run-ins with him long before he and Kay had ever met. Apparently a year or two before they met, he was arrested at the college for R-wording a girl in the dorms and was forbidden from coming back, but he had somehow found a loophole around coming in. And after the events of that night, they definitely would make sure he never came back into campus ever again. She began to see John less and less after then, only occasionally seeing him in random stores and doing everything she could to avoid him, as just the sight of him made her have severe panic attacks. Kay has definitely began to get better recently. She's talking to a doctor about her mental health, has gotten a major job promotion at her new job, and is in the process of losing weight for her own health and not for anyone else. And her rabbit is going to be three this year and is still very good at helping her cope with her emotions. 
to the ex-boyfriend who almost caused me to lose my sister and tried everything he could to ruin her life by hurting her and everyone around her. I hope to never see you again and I hope you rot in hell. Dude, fucking same. Retweet. Retweet. That was stupid. I'm sorry. That was stupid. I feel the same way. I hate him. I I hate him. That was a long story. I didn't I didn't realize how long that one was. This might be a long video. I don't know. My other two stories aren't like super long, so we'll see what happens. I it pains me that like you have to see him sometimes. Like and it's weird because like, I wonder if he's, like, stalking her. I don't know. Part of me thinks he, like, knows. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the situation other than what I've read. So, like, I can't, I guess I can't say anything. It's weird that she would still run into him places. Almost, is it, like, a small town? Like, how small is your town? I don't know. Pains me that she still has to see him every once in a while, even if it's just, like, a random place. Pains me because I wish that he would leave and never come back. Also, what happened to, like, the military thing? Shouldn't he, like, move? Get out of there? get stationed somewhere. Like, where is he going? What is he doing? He freaks me out. Don't like him. This next story says, he said it's what he gets for being a nice guy. Possible trigger warning essay. Nothing happens. Just, it could have happened. Hi, Courtney. I posted here a while ago with a story from when I was 12, but I thought I would share something more recent. Here we fucking go. It was a cool and overcast March night in my Northern California college town. It was 10 PM and I just clocked out from an exhausting shift at the sushi place where I bartend. I headed to my house, ready for the bottle of so I don't know how to say this, Sauvignon Blanc? <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc? I don't know how to fucking say that. Sauvignon Blanc that was waiting for me in my fridge. I think it's wine. I'm just gonna say I was waiting for the, the bottle of wine in my fridge. I walked through my door, tore off my apron, and beelined for my fridge. I was just about to open the bottle of wine when I got a text from my roommate. He said he had left his house key at our apartment and asked me to bring it to him at the bar he worked at. Initially, I was hesitant. It was only less than a 10 minute drive, but that didn't mean I felt like doing it. I almost texted him to tell him I would leave the front door unlocked for him, but I've seen enough true crime content to be paranoid about that. We live in a safe area, but the headlines are almost always, in a safe place where nothing happens, this happened. So I decided I would leave to bring him his key. He then texted me again to tell me he would give me a free drink if I brought his keys to him, and I'm not one to turn down a free drink. The bar my roommate works at has two floors. He was working the second floor, so I went upstairs, brought him his key, and enjoyed the gin and tonic he made for me while we both laughed at the karaoke on stage. To my left, there were three men. They each look about a decade apart from each other. One looked like he was in his early to mid-twenties, one in his mid-thirties, the last one in his early forties. They were hanging out together and I couldn't help but notice they were eyeing me, but I just kept minding my business. Eventually, the youngest came up with his friends behind him to strike up a conversation with me. He was making standard small talk and I responded politely but kept my responses short to let him know I wanted to be left alone. He told me he was out with his two friends to celebrate the end of midterms and offered to buy me a shot. I declined, and the youngest and oldest ones acted super bummed, shouting, Oh, come on, come on, just one, while the middle one was silent. I figured he was either their sober driver or was just shy. I still declined the shot, but remained polite in our conversation. The quiet one of the three remained silent the whole time. I had finished my drink and two glasses of water an hour later and told the group I was going home. Two of the men asked if I needed them to walk me to my car, and I was about to say no, and the quiet guy out of nowhere just says, I'll take her. I was surprised to hear his voice, especially the authoritative tone behind it. Either way, I told him that no, I was fine, and I had parked across the street from the bar. He was persistent and told me I shouldn't walk by myself. I again told him I was fine and said goodbye. I walked away, but he walked along with me anyway. You really don't have to walk me, I said. I want to, he replied with an ominous voice. The tone almost sounded possessive, low and husky. I started to let him walk with me despite my reservations, that is, until we got to the bottom of the stairs. Suddenly, all I could hear was pounding in my eardrums. My sternum got hit with a freezer burn, dry ice sensation. We were in a populated place, but I felt the urge to start kicking and screaming. My hair stood up on the back of my neck as a passing thought said to me, if you let this guy walk you out, it will be the last time anyone sees you alive. I stopped and said, I've got it from here. He responded, no, let me take you to your car. I replied, no, I really got it. He started to say he would take me when I interrupted him saying, no, I don't want you to take me. He looked taken aback and said, well, I guess that's what I get for being a nice guy. I just told him to have a good night and I left. I got to my car and once the adrenaline wore off, for some reason, I started sobbing. I just kept thinking how scared I was in the situation. I got back home and I wondered if I was being overly dramatic or if I was being mean to this guy. Maybe he really did just want to make sure I was safe. Was he a silent psychopath or a gentle introvert? The next morning, I log on to Facebook. There's a page I follow that reports on local crimes or incidents, and as I log on, they're at the top of my feed. A man had been arrested for sexual assault the night before. I scrolled down and almost threw up when I saw the mugshot of the man who tried to walk me to my car the night before. He had committed the crime a mere hour after our interaction. 
So dude who said he was being a nice guy, let's not meet again, you piece of shit. Dude, when I read that story, I, I read almost that whole one before the video, which I typically don't do, but I read almost that whole one and I was like, you are joking. You're joking. Like, it's crazy how right your gut instinct is. It's just fucking insane. I don't know. I just, I thought that story was crazy. But this last one says, the group of men that tried to kidnap me at my job at 17, let's not meet. Hi Courtney, I've sent a few stories already this week. And while writing these stories, I realized why I have a fear of being kidnapped. Anyways, let's get into it. I started working at this pizza place when I was 17 years old. This was hands down the worst and best place I worked. The coworkers were like family, but customers made your life hell. When I first started, I had a very crappy regional manager. He would smoke meth in the store and was never around. He also made everyone do his work for him. Anyways, he would disappear from the shift all the time for hours. I would always end up finishing the shift and doing my closing list and end up leaving before he would get back all the time. It was frustrating because he would leave at the worst times, like this one. One night, I was serving and a group of men came in. There was about four of them. They were very flirtatious, but I didn't mind at first. Then they started taking pictures of me. They also whispered among themselves while pointing at me. I then started getting really freaked out. It wasn't like they were sneaky about it either. I went to tell my manager and he was gone. All the other coworkers were teenagers and I was the oldest one. I decided to ignore them. I know dumb, but I was scared. The whole time they were there, they never stopped looking at me. They also didn't speak English very well, so if they were talking about me, I didn't know. They then left after a while. It was about two hours after closing, I was finishing up and I went to text my dad that I was coming home. I figured I'd be finishing something up in like three minutes and be out the door. The thing about my dad was that he never slept until I got home. He waited for me every night. I was the last person there and I grabbed my things and walked out. I look over at my car to see the men from earlier. They were parked in a car next to my driver's side door. They didn't see me yet. I tried to unlock the car from the passenger side, but I couldn't. I then decided that if I walked quickly enough to the driver's side, I could be able to go. My heart was racing. I knew they were there for me and only me. I tried to be fast, but they were all out of the car in seconds. I quickly unlock my door and one of them pushes it shut. They all grouped around me, telling me that they will give me a ride. I was literally crying at this point and they were just laughing. I said, no, I need to go home. I tried to open the door again and they slammed it shut again. I was freaking out. What did they want? I was trying to find a way out of this. I know I should have just grabbed my phone and called. But when your life is being threatened, you don't grab it. You fight or run. I personally decided to freeze. I stood there crying, trying to push past them to get back into the restaurant, but one opened the back seat door. The others were pushing me in. I don't remember what they were saying at this point. I was so scared. Oh my God, this is the most like, like what the, oh my God. Before I knew it, my father came blowing in the parking lot. They quickly let me go and got in their car and sped off. My dad got out of the car and came up and asked me what happened. I told him everything. He grabbed my arm and took me to his car. He wanted me to point them out because he didn't get a good look at their car. We drove around for a bit, but we didn't find them. Come to find out that I stalled the men long enough for my dad to get worried. He decided to come see what was taking so long and came to the store. My dad and I decided not to go to the police, more like I decided. I was freaked out. I told my manager the next day he was pretty much not concerned. He bought a taser. That was it. I never saw the group of men after that. I don't know where they are or what. I still don't know what they wanted from me. So to the group of men that tried to kidnap me, let's never meet again. I hate that story. I absolutely hate that story. I started reading that one, but then I was like, I think this is going to be good. So like, I don't think I need to read anymore. <laughs> Hated that one. Hated that one. That is terrifying and traumatizing and everything in between. I hated that. I absolutely hated that. I'm going to keep saying I hated that because I hated that so much. Bless your dad. Bless your dad. I love your father. Is he single? Just kidding. Sorry, that was stupid. But I, no, seriously, like that timing is impeccable. Like that is, oh my God. The fact that your dad just like knew something was, that's what I'm saying. Your gut instinct is always right. Your dad knew something was up because you said you were coming home. You didn't come home. He was like, okay, something's going on. He got his ass there, saved your life. It's great. It's so crazy. That is all I'm going to read for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other stories you want to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit linked down below. I can't tell if this video is a normal length or if it's long. I have no idea, so we'll see when I edit it. Not really sure. Also, yes, different colors, but it's fine. I'm very pasty. I'm very pale. I'm trying not to self-tan. I talked about that in a video a while ago. Not a while ago, but it feels like a while ago. I'm trying not to self-tan anymore just because like whatever, And but my makeup is a little too dark because I'm gonna go into this at the end. I'm gonna go. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye. What I was saying. So I have a foundation for when I'm pale that like pretty much matches like my natural skin tone. I have to burp. 
I have a foundation for that, but for some reason, it's like, okay, because I have that foundation and then a tan foundation. They're the same brand, they're Wet n Wild. The tan one is amazing, but the like lighter one, for some reason, it makes my skin really dry and I don't have dry skin. It just, it blends really weird. I don't know why, because they're, this, they're the exact same foundation. So I mix a little bit of the darker one with it to make it blend a little bit better. So it's a little too dark, but I've, I don't think it looks like terrible. Like, I don't fucking know. I wore it out last night, so hopefully it doesn't look that bad. But no, so I, yeah, I'm trying not to self tan, but I already talked about that. That's not what I want to talk about at the end of this. I wanted to talk about, um, <laughs> I think I tell you guys too much. I think I tell you way too much. I don't know why I'm going to tell you this, but I'm going to. I started <laughs> birth control. Um, I've never been on birth control ever in my life. I am 27 years old. I have never once been on birth control. I've never once gotten pregnant. So I think I'm infertile. I don't know. Uh, I started birth control because everything going on in the country right now is kind of freaking me out. With the whole Roe v. Wade thing, I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to go into it. Whatever. I don't care to go into detail about any of that. Whatever. You guys know my stance. I'm sure you know my stance. It's fine. If you know me as a person, you know my stance. So that's freaking me out. So I decided to start birth control just as like an extra precaution, just to be safe. I don't want to have babies. I really don't want. I don't want to have kids. I don't want kids. So, which is weird. So you know what's so weird? I was watching an old video of mine. It was from like maybe 2019. So like not not terribly long ago, from a couple of years ago. And it was a video with Kayla. Maybe it was before 2019 because I was still living in Texas. So. I don't know what year it was, but that doesn't matter. It was a couple years ago. I had a video with Kayla where we did like the assumptions thing. If you guys remember that whole trend that went on, people making like assumptions about you. And I talked about how much I wanted kids. It's crazy because I, if I got pregnant right now, I would, no, no, I don't want children. I do not want anything to do with children. I like my nieces and my nephew, but I don't want kids myself, I really don't. So I think that's crazy how much like you, your mind can change. And maybe my mind will change again, I have no idea. But as of right now, I do not want children. So I started birth control. And I'm on day two. I woke up, I felt horrible this morning, but it might be because I went out drinking last night. But I, I like Googled, I was like, can birth control make you depressed after one day? Cause I was like, holy shit, I haven't felt this way in so long. Once I like got up and like got ready and started filming, I feel a lot better. But damn, I woke up this morning and I was like, whoa, haven't felt this in a fucking long time. Cause I haven't been depressed in like years, it feels like. Like I haven't, I haven't felt my depression in a long ass time. That's why at the beginning of this video, I wanted to clarify that like there was nothing wrong. I just, my schedule got super messed up uh, over the last couple weeks. But no, I, I just, I started birth control. That's all I wanted to tell you. I don't know. Uh, they don't mess with my medications, my other medications, my psychiatrist like checked on that to make sure that it wouldn't be like killing me. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say, I guess. Uh, just a little update on my life. Um, I have my specialist appointment with like an either endocrinologist or rheumatologist, don't know which one it is. Uh, I have that appointment on the 15th. So hopefully I'll get more answers like next week on my health because I'm still really tired all the time. I'm really tired all the time sleep a lot. So hopefully I get some answers on that. I think it's just, I think they're just going to do blood work and whatever. Um, but hopefully they'll find something. I hope they find something. I know it sounds weird to like hope that they find something. What am I rambling about? Like I've been rambling for so long. I hope they find something so that I have answers. I, I don't want there to be anything wrong with me, but I, at the same time, there has to be something wrong and I would prefer if they like figured it out quickly. I don't know. So yeah, I have that appointment next week. I also have a hair appointment on Friday if you cared, since I'm telling you everything about my life. My hair has gotten pretty long. I'm not wearing my extensions today. My hair's gotten pretty fucking long. I think I want to bring the blonde back up. I think she's going to tone it too because we haven't toned it in a while because it didn't really need to be toned. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of like, should I tone my hair? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I just haven't, I feel like I haven't filmed in so long because I didn't film at all last week because I already had that TikTok video filmed from like two weeks ago for the sponsorship. And so I didn't film at all last week. So I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while and I'm just like, all I want to do is fucking talk. I might stream. Maybe that's a good, maybe I should start streaming. I don't know. I haven't streamed in a while either. I'm going to leave. I need to, I need to go. I love you guys. See ya.